Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Charles. I'm just checking in again. It's about um, almost a year for me on T, and the next 10 days will be my my anniversary. So maybe I'll do another update then. But what I wanted to do was talk to you guys about some things that I've learned along the first year of transitioning and kind of some tips on how to make it more successful for you. Um, there's a lot of information about physical kind of stuff that you can do as far as eating and exercise and whatnot and that's all out there and it's all important but I wanted to talk to you more about the inner stuff and how to get your your mind frame in the right place so that you succeed in not just through your transition but I mean in life in general and um, so there are a few steps. Uh, step number one, obviously, is stay alive. <laughs> it's it's the most important thing, obviously. We go through moments where we're low, and um, I know I've been there myself quite a few times, and all you gotta do is just stay in that place where you see how it goes tomorrow. and. If you can't, um, if you can't handle it, then reach out. You know, there's help out there, but always, always choose living and the potential of your life over anything else, because it can be great. It can be more than great. It can be beyond your your wildest dreams if you let it. So stay alive, and that means staying away from things that are going to potentially take that from you habits habits substances anything that's going to rob you of the life that you have it's not worth it keep it away from you keep it away and if people around you are doing it then stay away from those people because they're they're not going to help you they're just going to hurt you and rob your life and uh, you could you all deserve better than that so Second of all, um, I know you've probably heard of this, and or maybe you haven't, but really, um, I want to talk to you about uh, a practice that you can do every day to start changing the momentum of where your thoughts are. So, if you have a habit of feeling like you're in an, in a low place, you feel negative, and and it seems like that's just this repeating cycle, then the best thing that you can do is take time out of your day to start doing positive affirmations. Now, an affirmation is a statement that you make, or a thought, really, is a thought that you think, but it is a statement that you can say or you write that is affirming what you want. Now, maybe it's not saying what is, but it's affirming what you want to be true. And the reason that you do this is to retrain the way your mind is actually working. On a day-to-day -day basis, we have habits and we have patterns and we have momentum and that momentum is really guiding us through what's happening to us on a day-to-day -day basis and how people are reacting to us in part is a response to how we think about ourselves and how we allow ourselves to be treated. So what I do is I have a journal every morning. I dedicate at least 15 minutes to this journal where I write out my positive affirmations. And there are so many affirmations out there online that you can use to get yourself started. If you're looking for um, a legend from the affirmation field, look at Louise Hay. She's got books and all kinds of material online for that. Um, but as far as you, you and your journey, you want to start at the very core of a successful life, and that is loving yourself. So if you just do one affirmation a day, then start with, I love myself, or I am loved and I'm lovable. If you can start there, everything else will start opening up for you because you're going to change from the inside out people will feel you 
differently. They'll feel this vibe about you, the way you carry yourself. It, it's some, there's going to be something about you, and they're going to reflect it back to you. So dedicate this to yourself. If you can do it, looking in the mirror and actually talking to your own reflection, even better. That makes it, it's like you can see your own eyes, you're telling yourself, and it's communicating to a part of your brain that is not getting that message all the time. Because people that are feeling depressed and hate them their lives really don't feel like they're loved and they don't feel like they have love for themselves. And it's something that we, you know, my experience learned um, long, long time ago. So it's become a pattern. It's something that you do day in and day out for years and years. Then you're going to find that it's a very strong ingrained pattern within you. It's not going to change overnight, but that's okay. As long as you start making this step now, you're moving in the right direction. You're slowing the momentum down. You know, if it's a train moving 100 miles an hour, it's got to slow itself down before it could turn around and go in the other direction. So doing these affirmations is, is defining to yourself, to the universe, to anybody that is in contact with you that this is what I want, this is who I am, and so I'm dedicating my practice to making these affirmations. You can affirm anything. It can be about yourself, about joy, about abundance, about your body, you know, feeling love for your body. These are, there are so many, it's limitless how many, you know, affirmations you can do, but there's some core ones that you want to start with, and that is definitely one of the ones I highly recommend that you guys start, get a journal, and hand write it every day. When you use the muscles in your hand to hand write, you're involving your whole body, your eyes, the, the muscles in your hand. It's becoming a full body process when you actually hand write something out. It's very different when you type it. There's, it's a, there's a disconnect between typing something and how it registers in your mind. So really take the time to hand write it out and do it over and over and over again. You know, back in the day, teachers used to, if a kid uh, screwed up in class, they would hold them in detention and then they would make them write out, I will not do blah, 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 a hundred times. Why did they do that? What's the point? The point is, it's not a punishment, it's a retraining. When you repeat something over and over again, you're trying to retrain your mind and how you think. And, it, and by doing this, it actually forces you to reflect on it. It's not a passing thought. It forces you to, to think about it and what that feels like and what that would mean, what it would look like. So please do that. I really encourage you guys to do that. Um, the second thing, or third thing actually, is find someone that you feel is a mentor for you. Find someone that you feel inspired by. You know, and for uh, as as trans men, that could be even a cis guy. It could be uh, uh, an actor or someone who's in the development field, self development, uh, motivational somebody. That when you're around them, when you see them, they make you feel good. They make you feel like you've you've benefited by being around them. They put a smile on your face, or they make you feel like, yeah, I could do that. Finding a mentor or mentors to surround yourself with on a daily basis is so key because if you don't then that means that you're you're being influenced just by whatever is around you and that may or may not be positive it could be very negative what if you're in a very negative environment with people that are really depressed or you know negative and unmotivated or or um, you know shortage consciousness like like what if you're around that all the time? That happens to be your environment because you just happen to be there. Now what? You're going to become influenced and part of that environment unless you consciously decide, no, I want to be influenced and around these kinds of people because they build me up. So find that. Find that mentor. If it's a trans guy, there are guys on, on YouTube, you know, do your research, look out there. There's there's guys out there that maybe they inspire you. Maybe just looking at them, their physique inspires you. Hold that 
repeat that. Bring that into your world every day. Look at that picture or, or whatever because it's going to make you remember what's possible and give you that positive hope and boost that you're looking for. Whatever you do, find that person and repeat it. Keep it in your life because surrounding yourself by people that just bring you down is only going to make your your life harder and it's going to be a, a harder battle during your transition, right? Being in transition isn't easy. I, I, I've done this for almost a year now and I can tell you that it's not easy. It takes a lot out of you emotionally just to to function sometimes. And especially being male, you have to kind of, at least in my experience, this you have this front of you know, strength that you put on because that's just how you are as a guy. But in reality, it is taxing emotionally. And, you know, there's no reason that you can't just be yourself and also be in tune with how you feel at the same time. You don't have to play some role that isn't really authentic to you. Find that find that person that makes you feel like good and solid about yourself someone that inspires you and make that a priority um, socializing as far as my experience you know you you can find a lot of people in the LGBT community that are supportive you can find a lot of people um, in uh, if you have certain hobbies or certain passions in your life, surround yourself with those people that are passionate with that, with uh, what you want to do as well. Because your enthusiasm builds on each other. You guys bounce back off of each other and it becomes even better and more exciting and engaging. Um, and it will take your mind off of stuff that's maybe negative or harder for you too. Um, and... Also, and that brings me to the last point, really, which is if you want to succeed in your transition, you have to put your focus on yourself. And that doesn't mean being an asshole or being, you know, selfish and um, mean or cold-hearted to other people. But it, it means um, prioritizing yourself and what you need and where you put your energy and your focus. So, um, if you find that you're overwhelmed by, you know, the, the debates, the political debates and the religious debates or whatever about trans issues and whatnot, then I would say put how you feel ahead of everything else. And if constantly exposing yourself to that kind of um, back and forth battle is bringing you down, then you are completely free to remove it from your life. Don't feel compelled to be part of a battle just because you've taken on this label or you've decided to, you know, step into this part of your life. Like, if you're not, if you're not engaged and, and invigorated by that kind of life or those kind of topics, then all they're doing is making your life harder and stealing your focus and your energy. You need it. You, it. you need that energy for yourself. It's critical that you have it for you because if you're depleted, it will it'll affect your whole being and it'll make things a lot harder. You know, you're talking about changing your, your hormones, you're changing your biochemistry, you're also going through um, potentially changing how your family knows you, your friends, all the closest people to you. And so there's going to be social repercussions as well that you haven't dealt with before. All this stuff takes energy. It takes, it takes, it takes something out of you. So if you're going to add all this negativity of whatever kind of discussion or whatever political stuff is happening on top of that, you are going to feel it, and it's not going to feel good. It's just going to bring you down, and I don't want you guys to be brought down. I want to lift you guys up, and I want to give you things that are going to make you feel more powered, 
more empowered, more um, even a, a sense of peace or a sense of like calm in your life. Because sometimes it's just chaos. Nobody needs chaos. I like things that are calm and things that are chill just as much as I like, you know, invigorating, passionate things. Either way, they make you feel good, whether they're on the spectrum of like super excitement or just calm and, and a sense of satisfaction. Either they're, they're on that positive side of the spectrum. That's where I want you guys to be, and that's what this is about. So if you have any questions or you want to add anything, put it in the comments or let me know, and um, good luck in your transition.